Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Mary Parish. We are delighted to have you here with us for this Lenten retreat. Our celebrants this evening are Deacon Kevin Wynn and Father Graham. Our gathering hymn this evening is number 400, Be Thou My Vision. If you'll please stand. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather on this third night of this Lenten mission, we gather to celebrate the great gift of the Eucharist. So prepare ourselves this day to bring this mission to conclusion, to also continue our journey through Lent. Let us first pause and call to mind our sins. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the sea road, on the Red Sea Road, to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The Word of the Lord. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, he's not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I'm going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For you do not believe that I am. You will die in your sins. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true. And what I heard from him, I tell the world. They did not realize he was speaking to them of the father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. 
He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading from the book of Numbers, the people were fed up. They were tired. They were cranky. They lost trust in God. They lost faith. And so they they complained against the Lord. Our God is a just God. And his desire is always to call us to himself back into right relationship. And we'll go at all costs, spare none, to help teach us what we need as a loving father to give us consequences. He was fed up with the people and said, okay, if that's what you want, life without me is certainly death. And so he, he, he sent them uh, scorpions and, they, and, and uh, serpents and they bit him. They realized, mistake, mistake. Moses, help us. Ask the Lord to make it stop. So he had them. And this is kind of funny. When I prayed about this at first, um, Mo- our Lord said, make a seraph and mount it to, to a pole. And whoever looks after, uh, looks at it after being bitten will live. He made a, a bronze serpent, mounted it on a pole, and anyone who gazed on it that was bitten was, was, was healed, was restored. When they turned to the one in image, in image, who they were seeking, just as a fun fact, the serpent that they fashioned um, uh, is, is the same serpent that you see in the medical field. It's a caduceus, I think they call it, with the serpents intertwined going up the vine. And that's the image that they created. It's still a, a symbol of healing. Fast forward. Jesus in the gospel is speaking to the people and said, it's time. It's time for me to go. And um, they're going, where are you going? Where are you going? Where I'm going. You do know the way, he said later in Scripture, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. But but he, he reiterated, he doubled down on what we heard on night one, and we'll touch on it again later in John 17. This is in the uh, eighth chapter. Um, I am not of this world. I am not of this world. But he said, uh, when, you lift, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you realize that I am. And nothing that I do is on my own. When you lift up the Son of Man. When he lift up the Son of Man on the altar of the cross in the ultimate obedience to the Father to open the door of salvation that we've been talking about when we lay, when we lay eyes on our risen and our, our crucified Lord and then subsequently risen Lord and enter into that relationship with him we are healed too by the blood of Christ by his sacrifice on the cross and his subsequent re- resurrection we're healed. We're healed. When we spoke uh, on night one, we spoke about we spoke about three sections. In this raising up on the cross, our Lord is truly made known. God is made known, which is the fulfillment of the prayer that He had at the Last Supper that we heard. He also spoke about in that second part 
that we're not of this world, but in it. And he asks the Father to protect us, to keep us, to make us holy. And that brings us to why we are here. We said in the beginning that this was going to be a time to go on pause and contemplate where we are with our relationship with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I hope that our Lord has placed in your heart different things to contemplate. I was so happy that so many of you celebrated that great sacrament of healing when we look to the Lord who is raised up, the true divine physician. As we have taken time to contemplate what God has done and what God is doing in our lives today. And then take it a step further. Okay, Lord, as you reveal yourself to us more fully and make the Father known, as you reveal yourself more fully to us in word and sacrament, as you reveal yourself more fully to us, what is it that you would like me, each of us individually, to do with that, Lord? What would you like me to do as we strive to know in your and strive to know your will? Of course, the answer is do it. But it takes prayer. It takes imitation. Of Christ. It takes time set away from the ordinary busyness of our lives. He's not looking for us to know stuff about him. I said this earlier. He's asking for our hearts. He's asking for a deeper conversion. He's asking us to fall deeper and deeper in love with him who loved us first. It's not a one-time deal. This is a process that began at baptism and will continue for eternity, actually, when the fullness of God is revealed to us and we see him face to face. But that's what we're preparing for now. We're preparing for that now so that we can love our Lord in a deeper and fuller way so that we can grow in holiness, that we can grow in hope, that we can grow in faithfulness. To be a light to the world. To be a light to the world. To be different in a world that is, that is confused about not only what the truth is, but who the truth is. And the truth is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, What I heard from him, I will tell the world. My brothers and sisters, what you hear from Jesus, tell the world. God bless you. Together now, let us bring our prayers, needs, and intentions and place them before our loving God. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time, 
they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts adversion to and for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased who have gone to their eternal rest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions that we hold in the depth of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Love your fathers with confidence and faith. We come before you with our prayers, needs, and intentions. We ask you to see them all this day, for we make them as always in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. Number 517, O beauty ever ancient. Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the this sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and the glory of his name, for our, our good, and good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things they eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, light the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Have mercy on us, love.
Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe. Our communion song number 601, Christ be our light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the gospel with your lives. Thanks be, be to God. To God. Our final hymn together, number 714, Take Up Your Cross, 714. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you would my disciple be.
cross, be not ashamed. Let not disgrace your spirit.